Here are the nine most expensive vinyl records ever sold, and I'm your host, Josh Levine of Josh Levine Speaks. Last week at the auction, 13 totally random and useless facts of knowledge, and any other shows we come up with. Anyway, I got a disclaimer. There are other auction records out there, but I tried to avoid anything that sold for a high value because it was signed by the artist or owned by someone famous for the most part. There are a couple in there, but I just wanted it to be things you would actually stumble across at yard sales, flea markets, storage lockers, because I've always called records the scratch off lottery ticket of our business. Books are the same way. I mean, you're just looking for those key titles or rare printings or printing errors, etc. But let's just get into it. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's the most expensive vinyl records ever sold, according to me, or at least nine of them. Number nine is a sealed stereo jukebox edition of the Beatles' second album. It brought $2,400. It was pressed by Capitol Records in 1964 and was the second of three compact 33 records manufactured by Capitol Records specifically for jukebox players. It featured Thank You Girl, Devil in Her Heart, Money, Long Tall Sally, I Call Your Name, and Please Mr. Postman. The record included the little mini cover photos and three Seaberg little strips, the title strips that would go in the jukeboxes. You know, they're rarely found, but they are out there, so I want you to keep looking. You know, it, look for, uh, they'll say jukebox edition, they'll say something on the sleeve, but always look for things you've never seen before, variants. All right, at number eight, we have Dark Side of the Moon by Pink Floyd. This one brought $3,800. Why? Because it was a rare Japanese released edition, and I'll get into that a little later. Many say Dark Side of the Moon is one of the best albums of all time, but it's definitely one of the best selling, whether you believe it is a great album or not. It is a great album. Anyway, it was once estimated that one out of every 14 people under the age of 50 in the U.S. own this record. In fact, it still makes appearances on the Billboard Top 200, despite being released in 1973. Talk about a cult following. This, is a, this particular album's value and rarity came from the fact it was accidentally printed upside down. So in essence, an error. Of course, this only happens in the first run because once it's discovered, they pull these things from the shelves. But a few, of course, manage to sell and slip through. This one I speak of sold for $3,807, actually. And there's obviously more out there. So, you know, not a, it's a needle in a haystack sometimes, but they're out there. Look up the list of other errors and misprint records that are out there. You know, Google it, whatever. There's several desirable pieces just waiting to be found. In fact, there's one, there's another one coming up on our list, so I'll get into that. But there's several others, I mean, from bands you would just not expect. So number seven, The Velvet Underground and Nico by The Velvet Underground. One of these sold for $25,000 recently. Velvet Underground was fronted by the late Lou Reed and John Cale, and you know, they were really an iconic American rock band that was formed in 1964 and considered to be the pioneers of art rock, indie, and the avant-garde music genre in general. The first album is thought to be some of their best work, and the album is hard to miss because of that Andy Warhol cover. However, in this case, as with rare variant records, when this album was first released, there were a lot of extra and rare songs not released on the album that was in full production. Since these are rare versions, and because they have these missing songs, they're highly sought after, and no wonder why this one commands $25,000. Pretty cool. Next up, at number six, the freewheeling Bob Dylan by Bob Dylan. One of these just brought $35,000 and almost has the same story. Bob Dylan, you know, the American folk singer, musician, and political activist, has released over 36 studio records, but Freewheeling is his second release. It's really considered his first by many because it had the most original songs. I believe 11, it was 11 out of 13 were originals and his first album, I think he only had two original songs on there. Anyway, it kind of makes it his first real album in the eyes of many. This is, let me tell you why this one sold for $35,000. Besides being in mint condition, this particular album contained four extra songs that were quickly removed on the rest of the pressings by Dylan. 
One of very few versions of this actually exist and slipped out. They were quickly pulled from the shelves and replaced by a version without these on. Are you seeing a trend here? Anyway, what's number five? This one is one of my favorite. It's Yesterday and Today by The Beatles. Lots of Beatles records are on this list, but this album was their ninth record on the Capitol label and their 11th overall in America. The original album came out in 1966 and was released only in the US and Canada at first. Kind of rare for the Beatles at this time. However, when the album was first released, it featured a cover of the band wearing butcher clothing, why they all held meat and blood covered baby dolls and baby doll parts sounds so much worse than it is and it looks pretty tame to me. It's known to collectors as The Butcher and it was an outrage. Being still a little prudish in the US, after all it was 1966, everything was offensive and disgusting. Wait, that sounds familiar to me. Oh, anyway, it was only released in select markets. They were pulled off the shelves that same day. I think it was on a Tuesday, I, I'm not kidding. I, I think that's when they would release the records and you know of course the kids that were all lined up and waiting outside a few of these sold so they slipped out anyway capital records replaced the cover with a big decal on the ones that were in the stores but they really wanted to destroy all of them but however a few were sold and you know those crazy kids who are waiting in line sometimes it pays off one of these extremely rare records just sold for $39,000 and they are still out there. I did personally find one for a client going through theirs and said, hey, you got a winning lottery ticket here and it was hammered. I mean, the condition was terrible and I still think it brought $900. Anyway, it was like half chew chewed up too. I mean, it was really bad. At number four, My Happiness by Elvis Presley brought $300,000. Obviously, if you have a pulse, you know who Elvis Presley is. I think I know. Anyway, definitely one of the most influential icons in the music history. This particular record happened to be a test pressing of Elvis's first ever record. A fun fact is Jack White, former half of the White Stripes, is the guy that bought it back in 2015. He's known as a huge collector of vinyl, especially the rare and unique. At that time, I think it was the third most expensive vinyl record ever sold. It's been beat, but whatever. At number three today is Double Fantasy by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. Once sold for $400,000. You know, after the Beatles had gone their separate ways, John Lennon worked with his wife, Yoko, to make a few records, including Double Fantasy, which was released in 1980. One copy of this record sold for $400,000 in an auction back in 1999. Why? This was the one Mark David Chapman asked John Lennon to sign before he assassinated him in December of that year. A little morbid, but people collect these things. This particular album was used in court as it had Chapman's fingerprints on it and it helped convict him for a life sentence. Chapman still remains in prison to this day. I just got another idea for a show. Okay weird things like that that sell. Anyway, number two, The Beatles' White Album, $790,000. You know, for the longest time, this vinyl was number one, regardless of it being second, not too shabby. This one in particular had an incredible, a couple of special things about it. First, it was the first pressing of the run. And at this point, number one meant, they started doing this back then, they were serial numbering the actual record. So each record got its own serial number. This was 00000001. This record actually had that serial number and it turned out the original owner of that record was Ringo Starr himself. Two killer facts to collectors, as you can see, $790,000. Pretty crazy. All right, what's number one? Once Upon a Time in Shaolin by the Wu-Tang Clan. Two million dollars. Why two million dollars? Interestingly enough, this is the greatest story on here. The Wu-Tang Clan only made one copy of this record back in 2015 and there was a contract associated. Whoever bought this was not allowed to sell or profit from it for 100 years. However, the buyer could release the album for free at any time. The buyer ended up being the CEO of Turning Pharmaceuticals and he paid the price of $2 million for the record. That's a whole other story. Let's just say it's now in the hands of the federal government 
and it's yet to be released. I'm not kidding. It'll turn up. But there you go. I hope you enjoy these shows and you're finding them helpful. Please like, subscribe, or just comment below because I really want to know your feedback and make this channel better and better each and every week. I'm only three months old at this point, so let's see. Yeah, I'm only three months old. Did you know that? Anyway, see you next week.